Well, we uh, um, trigger warnings, safe spaces, safe zones, shout downs, um, microaggressions, bias response teams, and as we saw from the video, even riots on campus today. We want to thank you all for joining us uh, in, in the audience and uh, certainly our witnesses today. This is our second in a series of hearings to highlight the First, uh, First Amendment. The history of intellectual growth and discovery clearly demonstrates the need for unfettered freedom, the right to think the unthinkable, discuss the unmentionable, and challenge the unchallengeable. That quote, taken from the 1974 Woodward Report at Yale, summarizes the policy that was for years the gold standard of what free speech on campus should look like. College is a place for young minds to be intellectually bombarded with new challenging ideas. Unfortunately, today on many campuses, students and faculty are forced into self-censorship out of a fear of triggering, violating a safe space, a microaggression, or being targeted by a biased response team. Restricting speech that does not conform to popular opinion contradicts the First Amendment principles and the right to speak freely without regard to offensiveness. Shout downs, disinvitations, and even violent writing, as we saw in the video, are some of the tactics used to silence opposing views. And the most recent example of how not to promote free speech on campus, students and even faculty at Evergreen State College berated and threatened a professor for questioning why a new campus initiative could not be debated. The police eventually stepped in to warn the professor it was no longer safe, think about this, no longer safe for him to actually come to campus. The college administrators stood by and did nothing. In fact, when asked to come and defend their speech, uh, speech policies at today's hearing, Evergreen's president, George Bridges, refused to testify, suggesting such policies truly are indefensible. And he was not the only one to decline an invitation to defend the policies that limit speech and ideas on our college campuses. I see in this past academic year, violent disruptions and the silencing of opposing opinions are detrimental to an educational environment where students can learn and engage in civil discourse. This has serious ramifications for our public education system. This committee is committed to help colleges reinstate the freedom of speech as an important protection. After all, it's no coincidence that the Constitution's framers prioritized the freedom of speech in the First, the first Amendment. With that, I would like to recognize uh, Mr. Krishnamurthy, a gentleman from Illinois, for his opening statement.